students are able to tackle projects in the form of working prototypes and physical iterations. For example, Ariel and I took an English science fiction class where we were, were assigned to create a tool um, to um, look into the future. Through this prompt, we created a 3D video chat hologram using laser printers, 3, laser cutters, 3D printers, and various programs like processing. Our holographic phone allows users to talk to each other in 3D. In another example, during the fall term, I pursued an independent study where I designed and built an almost completely 3D printed prosthetic hand in order to address the high cost problem in the current prosthetic industry. The hand has a functional grip and two separate modules that add in a USB drive and ruler. Thank you, stop by number three, booth number three to check it out. Emma, Annie, and Carrie, and we've used the past few months to use the Blaker Makerspace to create gadgets for good. Um, so Emma and I create a hallway regulator to easier keep track of the amount of students out of the class and at a time, and our goal is just to make it easier for um, us to know like that only one person out of the class and at a time, so not many people are out. We use the design thinking process to create and code circuits and light systems for our project. Um, so we're Carrie and Ella, and we are also eighth graders, and we created the Shisher. The Shisher is a stop sign that will be used in the hallways of Blake Middle School to keep the students quiet while people are doing everyday things such as testing, recording, etc. And it is a stop sign with lights on it, and we're hoping to use it like for everyday life of Blake Middle School. So stop by booth four for more information. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Chris Ayala, and I'm a media mentor here with our director, Rashmi Pimbrakar. We are presenting the Boston Public School Youth Voices program. BPS Youth Voices is a program empowering young critical thinkers to share their purposeful message and voice about topics ranging from human rights, environments, and other such important topics. Using media arts and design thinking, we are awarded grants from Adobe Foundation, Boz, Timothy Smith Network, and Boston Sim Foundations. The program is on its ninth year with over 62 in schools and 4,000 students participating. Come to booth five to know how BBS students make their purposeful ideas, opinions, and voices heard globally. Our BBS Youth Voices Live Showcase is on June 1st. Please join us to celebrate hundreds of original inspiring films and graphic design students' projects. You can also view them on our website and BBS Youth Voices Vimeo Film Channel. Thank you. Hi, we're eighth graders from Concord Middle School. I'm Joey. I'm Porter. And I'm Annie. In English class, we read the book A Long Way Gone by Ishmael Bia, which is about a boy soldier in the war in Sierra Leone. We focus on the injustices that the protagonist faces throughout the book. After reading the book, we were assigned a project that required us to mimic the uh, protagonist's journey using the Sierra Ball. Uh, we were tasked to learn how to code these Sierra Balls in ELA. Uh, th this allowed us to learn another language in our own language class. Pairing coding with a character journey led us to a deeper understanding of the injustice a character faced and led us to a greater sense of empathy. We were able to put ourselves in the mindset of someone whose situations we would likely never experience. Stop by booth six to learn more and get to play with the Spiro balls. Good morning, everybody. I'm Janai Thomas, and I attend Helen White Davis Leadership Academy. Last summer, students from Helen White Davis found a way to make summer learning loss a thing in the past, using a program called Tim Marks in Google Classroom. Eighth grade students were about to solve the effects of summer learning loss. Temrix is a math website that allows its students to actively participate in fun and rewarding math activities from anywhere. During the summer of 2018, I was assigned targeted Temrix and they allowed me to continue and progress in my math skills although I wasn't attending school. If I did have a question or something that I didn't understand, Google Classroom allowed me to ask my teachers and classmates questions. We created an online learning community. The next fall, I was able to implement the skills I learned over that summer while using Temrix into my math class. It allowed me to visualize complicated math concepts, thus I perform better in class. No summer side for me. Come to my table, which is table seven, to learn more about my experiences. Do you know what fake news is? No, I use, I use Wikipedia and I know that, that they put me information there. You will find fake information in any source that use the comfort that there is no real name in the website. Are you kidding me? I learned that the sun rotates the earth and I just have to Google it. How do you know if the information is real? Because, you know... My teacher has helped me understand how to find critical sources and I can look in the submit platforms for many different sources to compare. I don't need to look for sources. I can tell Google to do it for me. I respectfully disagree with your choice, but I can refer the next to the seminar so you can see if this not help on your skills. My name is Wilmer. My name is Melanie. We are students of the set up to the Sesto Middle School in Progress to Ryan. So they come talk to us so we can share with you how our school uses online learning. To help us find our voice to research and personalize feedback from our teachers. Hello there. We are seventh graders from Diamond Middle School. I'm Tommy. And I'm Fiona. EcoXPT is an immersive simulation that invites students to engage in observational inquiry and to explore the diverse investigative strategies practiced in the field of ecosystem science. EcoXPT was designed by Harvard University's Graduate School of Education and we piloted it in our classroom this year. Investigative tools in EcoXPT let us interpret experimental results and integrate our findings with other sources of evidence, including observations and data collected in the virtual world. We had fun using EcoXPT in our classroom. Stop by our table to learn more about it. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Lucas Bacci, and this is Chad Cho. We're eighth graders at Doherty Middle School. Have you ever wondered if there is a way for people to transport water and heavy supplies over rough terrain? We created the ATPT for this purpose. For NASA's OSPART spin-off challenge, we combined NASA's rock and bogey mechanism and MIT's altering wheelchair. We were able to create an effective method for transporting large and heavy loads. We used the structure of the rocker bogey and the handle power from the all-terrain wheelchair to create the ATPT. This provides two methods of transportation, human power and electrical power. If you would like to see the prototype in action, you can come to table 10, and we would be happy to demonstrate how it operates on rough terrain and steep slopes. Thank you. And I'm Ada Wynne Byrne, and we're from Essex Middle School in Essex, Vermont. In 2013, Act 77 was passed, uh, and Act 77 basically consists of three standards that all the districts and schools in Vermont have to follow. Uh, so the three components are personalized learning plans, which is how we customize our learning, flexible pathways, and proficiency-based learning. Uh, so come to our booth to learn how we personalize our learning and enhance it with all our tech, with technolo technology. We will share evidence of our student-centered personalization through a variety of tech tools, including Protean or PLP. So come to booth 11. and I'm Flavia, and we go to KQ Middle School in Warren, Rhode Island. So, how many people have the fear of speaking up in class or in front of a large crowd of people, like this one? Or you just wish you had a do-over button? How about you, Flavia? Yes, I could definitely use a do-over button, especially when I'm in class and I don't understand how my peer got to a certain answer. I used to ask them how they got to the answer, but I would end up getting a bit frustrated. I had trouble explaining my methods and strategies to others. Using Flipgrid has allowed me to improve having face-to-face -face conversations with my peers. We're connected learners by using Flipgrid. We can view and sometimes reply with constructive feedback to other students on our team. I have more fun learning when I feel connected with others. I remember more information and I'm able to apply it later on. Last year, my math class and I were able to communicate with students all the way in Michigan. Wouldn't you agree that by recording and doing over on Flipgrid, we have improved our ability to um, share our thinking more clearly in and out of the classroom? Yes, so come over to booth 13 to learn how to amplify your voice and spread your ideas. Hello, fellow innovators. I'm Amit, and this is my classmate, Joshua. We are here to share a student-driven project called Blue Moose. There are so many options out there to share creativity and technology, but so few opportunities to have the freedom to do so during school. This project gives us a platform to practice writing while sharing about topics that are personal to our individual platforms. By creating an online digital news magazine, your students can share with the school community classroom projects, personal interests, book reviews, videos, photo albums, polls, and so much more. We asked many students throughout the middle school why they loved the Blue Moose so much. Here's what we learned. That they like learning new tech. They liked writing about their passions. They like being able to have the time to write. They like being able to express their creativity. They like that it's open to almost anything. They like getting to know classmates in a new way. And they like being able to write without grades. If you'd like to learn more, please come by booth 16. Hi, my name is Chase, and this is my partner, Toe. We're both seniors from Mercy Career and Technical High School, and together we are Greenflow. So Greenflow is an environmental ergonomics food service tailored to urban communities. Our goal is to create sustainable urban food cycles and reduce disease factors, as well as waste produced from food packaging and food processing. Along with that, like I said earlier, Greenflow is also 100% zero waste and aims to impact high school education. We also are in 
adding virtual reality to teach, educate uh, other students to, uh, about gardening. Uh, it allows teachers to bring gardening into the classroom. Which basically closes the barrier between lack of access and education to sustainable farming. We believe that uh, predicting the future is all about designing it. And we want to do that by making sustainable change. If you're interested in learning about the future of sustainability in urban communities, please visit booth 17 in the back. You can try to our VR lab. Uh, we're about to order cooler. Thanks. Hello, I'm Andrew. And I'm Mike. And today we're showcasing Coders. It's robotics programming in the cloud. At North Reading High School, Coders has been integrated into a number of classes, including our Robotics Academy class. However, Coders provides the excellent environment for teaching students at both a beginning level, intermediate level, and a high-paced level. This is because Coders allows students to program in a block language or in a Java language based on their skills and provides a number of different levels of different difficulties. Also, the coders allows you to download your programs onto hardware robots, like EV3s, for example. So what I did is I built a course that basically replicates the driving test, and I had my robot run through the whole thing. And it's a really fun project. So if you want to learn more about coders, check us out at Booth 19. Thank you. Our names are Caitlin and I'm Emma, and we are in 8th grade at Norton Middle School. Over the past two years, we have created two tactile picture books. We made them by modifying a template from the University of Colorado. By modifying it, we were able to add the names of the animals in Braille. We ended up printing several copies, and they are now in our elementary school and public library. We kept going because we liked the feeling of knowing that we helped someone. So in 7th grade, we made emotions. We started from scratch and did the same thing as Deer Zoo. We added pictures, braille, and words. With both books, we made each page a different color. So if the kids have siblings or if they can partially see, it's fun for them. So now both books are cataloged in the North Public Library and in the Sales Network. Thank you. Hi, I'm Emma Boyd and I'm Duane Srinivas. Before I enrolled in studies, I had no idea what STEM and entrepreneurship were. All I knew was that I loved science and technology and wanted a talent my school just could not provide. Through youth studies, I've learned that entrepreneurship and STEM are two concepts that apply to, to countless fields and can be used to impact the world. Through youth studies, I learned that STEM is actually a very team-weighted um, activity. Before youth studies, I thought people in STEM fields just sat in cubicles or in labs all day. But since our classes are in places where real people do their jobs, I got to see how many people are involved in launching a product, and that's really eye-opening. Youth Studies has taught me that entrepreneurship and STEM are a confluence of everything we learn in school. They're not only science, math, and technology, but also English, public speaking, and even geography. I never thought I'd be using my skills that I learned in Youth Studies in English or History class, but I use my public speaking and pitching skills when working on persuasive essays or theses. In school, we're so focused on memorizing as much as possible for the next test, but we end up forgetting it by the next week. Youth Studies has taught us how to use concepts that we learn to um, impact the world. Thank you. All right, let's give a big round of applause.